Hello, John from Bang & Olsen in Manchester. On the 17th of November 1925, one of the world's oldest and most influential AV brands was born. Ladies and gentlemen, join me on this little trip through Bang & Olsen's history. I will also put a link in the description for the official Bang & Olsen 95th anniversary video because genuinely it brought a little tear to my eye. I don't know what that says about me, but it's a must watch. So please watch this one and then go and watch Bang & Olufsen's. Let's crack on. It all started with Peter Bang, fascinated with technology since boyhood and in particular radio. He wasn't satisfied that his radio experiments relied on battery power, so in 1923 he came up with the idea of the mains receiver, a radio that could draw power directly from the mains. After living in New York City, where radio was much more established, Peter returned to Denmark and called on his friend and fellow engineering graduate Sven Olufsen. Together they would conduct experiments in the tower room at the Olufsen estate, Quintrup near Stroer in Denmark, which later became Bang & Olufsen's first laboratory. Peter Bang and Sven Olufsen were a formidable pair. Peter, the ideas man with exceptional engineering mind, and Sven, whilst also a talented engineer, was armed with charm and a sharp business acumen. They were sure to succeed. On the 17th of November 1925, Bang & Olsen was officially registered. The pair began working on the first Bang & Olsen product, the Eliminator, an aggregate connecting a battery receiver to the mains, meaning noiseless power for radios, went into mass production in 1927. The first mains powered radios were soon developed for mass production. As Peter had envisioned, the radio boom had begun and Bang & Olsen were right there at the start of it all. By the late 20s, Bang & Olsen diversified and produced amplifiers and speakers for the first movies with sound, or talkies. The first Mickey Mouse film, Steamboat Willie, was heard in Denmark for the first time on Bang & Olsen sound equipment. By the 1930s, Bang & Olsen were making loudspeaker vans for the circus and Danish army. The radio business was flourishing and they began integrating radios and gramophones into beautiful furniture. The quality was so superior that Bang & Olsen achieved the Danish hallmark of quality. This was a huge accolade at the time, ensuring only the best quality would leave the factory. They were even appointed by the royal family to supply gramophones for the royal homes. 1938, the first product to bear the BO prefix, a Bakelite radio called Beolit 39, styled on the grill from a Buick Y motor car. Plus the first radios with push button station memory, just like now putting user experience at the front of the design with easy station selection. In the 1940s, the record changer Type G64A was released, holding up to 10 records and mechanically changing between them. This was an absolute feat of engineering at the time and nothing else had ever been seen like it. The 1940s saw more improvement to the Biolit radio and the Biocord 84U, the world's first consumer magnetic recorder used by hobbyists and professionals alike. The 1950s, more Biocord recorders, smaller, lighter and more convenient and high performance microphones for professional recording. Lady shavers, yes, lady shavers were made by Bang & Olsen in the late 40s and early 50s and most importantly, the first Bang & Olsen television. A screen with integrated loudspeakers making use of the finest materials and beautiful locally sourced wood. Look familiar? How about a flexible TV that can be moved? Meet the wheelbarrow from 1952, with integrated pull-out handles so that it could be wheeled into different rooms. 1956, Peter Bang and his son show off the Futurum, the first TV to incorporate Bang & Olsen's now-renowned magical movement. Motorised drawers that conceal the audio equipment and a TV screen that rises from the cabinet. So to people that ask why Beervision Harmony rises to reveal the gorgeous OLED panel, it's in their DNA. Magical movement and surprising experiences like no one else. The late 50s and into the 1960s, the Beolit travel radio is going strong. Bang & Olsen are now integrating gramophones, radios and televisions into modular systems to be configured how the user liked. 
In 1960, Bang & Olsen started to make class-leading pickups in an aim to gain Bang & Olsen's reputation as world champion of record players. The SP-1 pickup used on the 1960 stereo gramophone was one of the most advanced audio pickups in audio history. Throughout the 60s, the focus remained on beautiful, high-performance stereo audio. The legendary designer Jakob Jensen, with his then assistant David Lewis, were assigned their first of many projects for Bang & Olufsen, the Biolab 5000 amplifier, a number of their designs being displayed in the Museum of Modern Art. As most of you watching this will be aware, their collective and individual designs over the years that followed have shaped Bang & Olufsen forever. This meant by the late 1960s, Bang & Olufsen's use of aluminium would be recognisable to even new Bang & Olufsen customers today. Clean and precise and elegant, like the Beosystem System 1200. Bang & Olufsen televisions were made thinner to enable them to sit on a shelf and not look bulky and unsightly. The 1970s saw the introduction of the trumpet foot on Beavision 600, the excellent U70 headphones and one of the most iconic Bang & Olsons of all time was released, the legendary Beogram 4000 turntable. The Beogram 4000 was a huge success due to its design and usability and shaped the future of Bang & Olsen's philosophy about providing beautiful products for music lovers. This is why Bang & Olsen relaunched a limited number of rebuilt and factory refurbished Biogram 4000C turntables this year in 2020. These are very special products indeed and signify a significant period in Bang & Olsen's history. The 1980s saw a new loudspeaker design language to match the aesthetically beautiful audio systems. Rather than traditional wooden boxes, slim, elegant designs were introduced, often using aluminium. They would have a smaller footprint but not compromise on sound performance. Speakers like the Beovox CX series. All of Bang & Olufsen's experience was called upon to create a speaker small enough to sit on a shelf but would rival the sound of a much larger floor standing speaker. Red line passive speakers were produced to work with any amplifier that didn't need to be pushed up against the wall because the box was unfinished at the rear like traditional speakers. Instead they could be pulled into the room and positioned more flexibly because all parts of the cabinet were beautifully finished and they looked like sculptures. Biolab Penta was the most powerful domestic loudspeaker made by Bang & Olufsen at the time. It was doubted that such a speaker would be a success in the AV market. It was decided to go ahead with the project and if 962 pairs could be sold worldwide the project would be worthwhile. At the end of their run more than 100,000 Biolab Pentas were sold. Then there was Biolab 5000 from 1988 that was designed to hang like art on the wall, an inspiration for Biosound Shape, Biovision 14 and Biolab 12. The 80s also saw the world's first multi-room audio system, Master Control Link, a view into the future of connected music throughout the home. The 1990s saw some of Bang & Olufsen's most iconic products, starting with the Beosystem System 2500. This design would spark the Beosound Overture, Beosound 3000 and Beosound 3200. All loudspeakers became active and Bang & Olufsen once again launched into a new era. Active bass linearization was patented. This new system exploited the amplifier and bass drivers like never before to extend bass response dramatically. This allowed Bang & Olufsen to create smaller speakers with no compromise on sound. This new technology was incorporated into Biolab 8000, one of the most iconic speakers ever produced, and Biolab 6000 and 4000, making three of Bang & Olufsen's best-selling loudspeakers ever. I still have a very old pair of Biolab 6000 and they still sound great today. Biolab Penta was replaced with the mighty Biolab 1. The flagship speakers were now fully active and were the best sounding Bang & Olufsen speakers to date. On the video side, the Bio System AV9000 was developed in 1992. The first TV to have anti-reflex coatings on the screen and the famous black curtains that would reveal the picture like a real cinema when turned on and close again when turned off. It could also adjust contrast and brightness on the screen reacting to the ambient light conditions in the room, something unheard of at the time. 
It also began the Bang & Olsen home cinema experience that allowed connection of five active speakers. Masterlink Multiroom was very popular by letting you play music and TV around the house seamlessly on all of your connected Bang & Olsen equipment. This offered a futuristic experience like nothing else. One of Bang & Olsen's most famous televisions was launched in 1995, the Beavision Avant 28, with integrated VCR and turning stand. It was slimmer than most rivals and beautifully designed from any angle. The sound, thanks to the built-in loudspeakers, was, and still is, truly incredible. Now how could I not mention the Beosound 9000? This iconic 6-disc CD player took a lot of inspiration from the legendary Beogram 4000 turntable with the two arms of the clamper very reminiscent of the tangential arm on the turntable. Like vinyl records, the artwork on the CDs was left on display through the glass door instead of being hidden away in an anonymous black drawer of a CD player. Biosound 9000 was an engineering masterpiece with a CD clamper that could move up to 30 km per hour and stop within one one thousandth of a millimetre. And finally, into the 2000s. The first TV with integrated DVD player is introduced, the BioCenter 1, with its motorised floor stand or neat motorised wall bracket. And everybody that is watching this I'm sure has at least seen a BioCom 2 telephone. Not forgetting the BioVision Advance more affordable little brother, the BioVision 3. I had one of these for years and I absolutely loved it. The first flat panels came along with BioVision 4. BioVision 6, BioVision 7 followed at a time marketed as the world's best sounding TV and the big daddy BioVision 5. I've lifted these up flights of stairs before now and I really don't recommend it. Then the new BioLab 5, an absolute powerhouse of sound. The first with adaptive bass control that could measure the bass response back from their position in the room and acoustic lens technology that would reduce room reflections and provide detail and stereo imaging like nothing else at the time. Acoustic lens are still being used today in BioLab 18, BioLab 20 and even the BioLab 5's replacement, the incredible BioLab 50. Bang & Olsen sound systems and rising acoustic lenses were added to the Audi A8 in 2005, creating quite possibly the world's best car audio system. 2007, perhaps the most important year in Bang & Olsen history, the year that a 25-year-old me started as an installer at Bang & Olsen of Nantwich. The company will never be the same again. <laughs> and the here and now, 2020. Still making beautiful products, still drawing on 95 years of design and acoustic competence. The pinnacle of everything so far, Biolab 90. Possibly the world's most powerful domestic loudspeakers and true marvel of audio engineering. For the 95th birthday, Bang & Olsen have released Bioplay H95 headphones, the best headphones in Bang & Olsen history, the Biogram 4000C, an icon reborn and the special gold collection. So thank you for joining me on that trip through history. I'm sure you can agree that Bang & Olsen is a truly unique company in the AV world. I'm proud to put this shirt on every morning and I genuinely feel privileged to be a tiny little part of their story. So here's to you Bang & Olsen, happy 95th birthday and here's to another 95 years. Mm. Apple juice of course, you'll see me in the next video.